I'm Winston Essex. Most of my guests here at Mansfield House have retired for the night. But as you see, I am not so fortunate. The efficient management of a place like this takes up a good deal of time. Because here, we deal in personals. Here, the individual needs of our guests are catered to quickly and efficiently. Whereas in some hotels, the guest is little more than a number on a room key. Take the case of Mrs. Alexander, for example. She and her husband checked into a modern and lavish hotel which lacked the personal touch. And what followed was not only inconvenient, it was a positive nightmare. This is Mrs. Alexander, Suite 210. Would you please have my husband page? Not sure. Aging, Mr. Alexander. Mr. Alexander, to the telephone, please. Mr. Alexander, to the telephone. Mr. Alexander, to the telephone, please. Well, ma'am, we've paged all parts of the hotel, but your husband seem to be responding. Thank you.
Are there any messages for me? Who is this? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. This is Mrs. Alexander, Suite 210. There are no messages for you, Mrs. Alexander. I see. Thank you. Well, would you connect me with the manager's office, please? Hello? Hello? Yes. I'm sorry to trouble you. Yes? What can I do for you? Uh, this is Mrs. Alexander, Suite 210. Everything all right? Oh. Yes, very comfortable. Thank you. Uh, look, <laughs> I know this may sound silly, but, well, all of my husband's things have dis... Hello, Mrs. Alexander? Hello? 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 Are you there? you were just carrying a uh, tan with green and red stripes. Sweet 210. Oh, why did you take them? Why? Yes, why? Who told you to? The front desk. The gentleman is checked out. Oh, that's impossible. I'm sorry. No, ma'am. Look, Sweet 210. Uh, we keep a very careful record of checkouts. I'm Mrs. Alexander, Suite 210. Uh, a bellhop just told me that my husband has checked out. Well, did he? Well, I'll check, Mrs. Alexander. Uh, Suite 210, you said. That's correct, Mrs. Alexander. Your husband has checked out. Oh, but he can't have. 
There's been a mistake. No mistake, uh, I assure you. It's not true. You. What seems to be the problem? Who are you? My name is Brett. I'm the assistant manager. Well, they keep telling me that my husband has checked out. Oh, but he can't have. There's been a mistake. Alexander, 210. I am sorry, Mrs. Alexander. There was a mistake. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. But it's been corrected. Then perhaps you can tell me why my husband's bags were taken from my room. Well, as I said, Mrs. Alexander, there was a mistake. We've corrected it. But your husband has checked out. Twenty-eight, fourteen, seven, fifteen, eight, thirty-five, fifteen, eight, thirty-five. I still don't understand. This is... was our first vacation in years. He'd been working so hard. He can't have checked out. Take my word for it, Mrs. Alexander. He has. To think. It took me six months to talk him into taking time off. Fifty-five. You said there was a mistake. But it's been corrected now. Fifty-five. What did you mean? One. Did I say that? What did you mean? Excuse me, Mrs. Alexander. I have some business to attend to. If these two seats were free. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> I said to George, oh, this is George. Uh, my name is Betty. George and Betty Carter. I said to George, that poor woman looks sad and lonely, and we ought to go over and keep her company, see if we can cheer her up. <laughs> and George agreed. Didn't you, George? That's what I said. I didn't catch your name, dear. Oh, it's, it's Ellen. Ellen Alexander. I was right, wasn't I? You are lonely. You could say that. You're here all alone, Seven, aren't you? 59. I was with my husband. Seven, 59. Oh, you poor thing. You poor dear thing. What happened? He checked out. Did you hear that, George? Uh, you know, George and I always planned that we would come here together and stay together. We did, didn't we, George? We sure did. Six. Twenty-two. Fifty-seven. I don't understand. Now, if you checked in together, how come he left without you? Forty-five. You tell me, Mrs. Carter. Oh, please, call me Betty. Do you understand that, George? I can't say that I do. Now, Mrs. Alexander, are you sure? Mr. Carter? Uh, yes, that's me. They're calling your number, sir. Oh, they are? 62257. Oh, that's right. Well, not yours, ma'am. Oh, but they must have. No, ma'am, just Mr. Carter. Would you follow me, sir? No, no, he can't go without me. No, we plan to go together. Now, no, you tell them, I George. Don't, no, I don't want you to worry. They just probably made a little mistake. Now, we'll go check it out. 49. 29. 34. 45. 
I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to Mrs. Mildred Garnett in Los Angeles. Area code 213-555-2612. This is her daughter calling. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You dropped this, Mrs. Alexander. You should keep it with you. Or you won't know when they call your number. Yes? What do you mean you can't get through to Los Angeles? The circuits are all busy. Well, when will the circuits be free? I'm sorry, I really don't know. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Please tell me. Well, it wasn't his fault. He... They came for him. They called his number, you see.
four, 29, 32. Four, 29, 32. Sixteen, seventeen, four, sixteen, seventeen. Thirty one, forty seven, twenty five, thirty one, forty seven, twenty five. we feel? What happened? We fainted. Nothing serious. I went outside. <laughs> uh-huh. That was naughty of us, wasn't it? Why do we do that? We didn't. I did. I wanted to get out. I had to get out. Well, we... <laughs> you won't be doing it again no. in a hurry, will you? No. I must leave. Are you sure you're all right? What? All right. Feeling better? Oh, yes, yes. Thank Good you. Good girl. Now, if you need anything, just use the telephone. I'd like to see Mr. Brett. What on earth for? I just want to talk to him. <sighs> Mr. Brett's a very busy man. Very busy. Will you tell him? If I see him.
This way, please. There's nothing to worry about. You are authorized to be here. If you're not authorized, I'm afraid you're not supposed to be here. May I have your card? Card? Yes, ma'am. Your card. I, uh... I 
don't have it. They called your number, didn't they? I don't know. Thank you. I'll take care of it from here. Please. Mrs. Alexander? something new, Mrs. Alexander. You see, even in the best run establishments, the possibility of error occurs. I'm afraid that that's what's happened in your case. My husband? Yes, that was an error. But I wasn't referring to that. I was referring to your lack of awareness, your confusion. But I don't know. Now, please, let me finish. You see, once in a great while, we have a guest here who is unaware. When that happens, we have a routine procedure for setting them right. But that procedure takes time to implement. In your case, longer than usual because of your actions earlier. When I went outside? Exactly. The usual procedure was interrupted temporarily. But I expect to receive authorization to explain everything to you shortly. I'd like you to explain outside to me right now. Oh, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Do you know what's out there? Yes, I do. You still won't tell me? Not won't. Can't. I'm not authorized. And until you are authorized, I just have to wait. Yes. Even though it's driving me out of my mind. Even so, Mrs. Alexander. Betty, uh, this is Ellen Alexander. Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Yes? Could you meet me? How about the bar? Oh, yes, the bar would be fine. I'll be there in five minutes. In five minutes? Yes. All right. Thank you. See you there. Get you a drink, Mrs. Alexander? Oh, no, thank you. Lonesome, lady? I'm lonesome. Lonesome as hell. Left a wife and three kids back home. Missed them already. I, I'm sorry. I don't want company. The story of my life. <laughs> That's a funny one. The story of my life. <laughs> Let me buy you a drink anyway. No, thank you. Come on. What's the harm? Where we're going, it won't make one bit of difference. Where are we going? What? That's what I said. Where are we going? You. Me. All of us. <laughs> You're putting me on, lady. No, I'm not. Tell me. You're not putting me on? No. You want to know something, lady? You're weird. 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 44, 44 17, 17, 9, 9 33, 33, 72, 
I'm glad you called. 34. There's nothing like a nice 14, cat to pass the time. 50. My George always used to say that... 50, where are they? One. Who? Your husband. My husband. Where have they gone? Well, if we knew that, dear, it would be so much easier. What would? With well, this. All of this. The waiting and everything. 25. But you said 32, your husband checked out. That's right. 79. Then it's all right, isn't it? My George, bless him, he didn't check out. Then where is he? Mrs. Alexander. Yes. 25. 32. 79. 25. 32. 79. They're calling your number, Mrs. Alexander. 25. 32, 79. 25, 32, 79. 25, 32, 79. If you will please come with me, Mrs. Alexander. If you see George, tell him that... I was afraid it would be you. Yet you didn't try to hide. Would it have done any good? No. Come, Mrs. Alexander. No. But you've nowhere to go.
I won't go, you know that. But you have no alternative. What about my husband? He can't come with you. Why not? I think you know. I don't know. Tell me. Prove it to me. Do you really want him to go with you? Yes. And I won't go without him. Well, there might be a way. How? Yours has been a special case. Errors and mistakes right from the start. In such cases, we can occasionally bend the rules. Tell me how. Well, you have to state officially, on the record that you insist that he goes with you. That's all? That's all. Then I say it, officially, on the record. I want him with me. Oh, God, how I want him. I picked up Mrs. Alexander. We're going back. Yes, right back. I'll take full responsibility. You're not supposed to do this, are you? No. Then why? Call it a character judgment. My character? You make the right decision, there'll be no problem. If I don't? An accident. A bad accident. Why did he come with me to the hotel? It was a mistake. We thought he was ready. It happens sometimes, but not often. And now? And now it's up to you. We have only limited authority in such cases. It's entirely up to you. When will we be there? We already are. You go ahead, Mrs. Alexander. I'll wait for you here.
How is he? For a minute there, I could have sworn he was dead. But he's hanging on somehow. How about the other one? She died instantly. Shame, you know? Nice looking couple like that. He's a hell of a lucky guy. He could still have a long, full life ahead of him. It's up to you, Mrs. Alexander. The hotel that Mrs. Alexander found herself in, not at all the kind of place you'd expect to come across on most journeys. Then, her journey was extraordinary, wouldn't you say? Did she make the same decision you would have made, given the same circumstances? Think about it carefully, because one day, you could find yourself in a similar hotel and be required to make a similar decision. <laughs> 